Hi folks, I've um, come across a new Cornish hedge that's being built and I thought you might like to have a little look inside because the hedges I've shown you so far, um, the inside of, have always been collapses like that one that had some roots growing out of it. So this is a new hedge that's going up and if we look at the end of the hedge here, you can see a really good cross section of how it's built. So I'll just move around a little bit without slipping over so you can see the hedge from the side. This one is about, I don't know, four and a half foot, four and a half to five foot tall. So the principle is that you start off at the base about the same width as, as the height of the hedge. So if you're going up five foot, you want to be five foot wide at the base. And then that slopes in towards the top of the hedge down to about half the width at the base. So this angle that we end up sloping in at is known as the batter and to make the hedge really nice and strong what you want is a concave batter. What that means is, is that the stones down at the bottom, these ones down here, which are known as the grounders, their outside face is about perhaps 30 degrees and then gradually it comes around to upright so you get that nice concave shape. The fill of the hedge is really important. You have to make sure that you haven't got too much, too many roots or organic or too much organic material because that will rot down. I'll let Griff carry on there. So the ideal kind of stuff around here is a stuff called rab, which is actually made from denatured granite. So this kind of yeah, look at that. Yeah, look at that. You see that orangey stuff? So that's subsoil, and that means that the hedge won't. Oh look, let's have a look over here. Look, brilliant. So have a little look down there. You can see in the pit where. Griff has been excavating that subsoil. So that hasn't got much organic material in it, which means that once it's compressed, it doesn't keep on shrinking. If you fill it full of topsoil, get too much of this sort of stuff, what will happen is that will compress and that mean that the hedge might um, uh, collapse in on itself. Now, the way you place your stones is very important. What you want to do is make sure that every stone is sitting on one below absolutely solidly and the majority of the stone goes into the goes into the hedge so if you pick up a stone like say let's have a look from an ideal piece perhaps that one there what you want to make sure is that the majority of the stone goes into the hedge and that makes sure that it's all tied in nice and solid so row by row course by course on go the stones, then the fill goes in. You have to make sure that everything is solid before you move on to the next the next course. And then to finish off with, you can put a little bit of topsoil on the top and then some turf to finish off. And what will happen is that gradually all these gaps in between the stones, all across the top, will start to get, uh, the plants will start to grow and the roots will hold the hedge uh, nice and firm. And this will last probably for I don't know, 100 years, Griff? <laughs> yeah, quite a few years, hundreds of years. And actually, some of the hedges in Penwith have been here for thousands of years and are some of the oldest structures on the planet that are still doing the job that they were put up for. So they're put up as um, barriers to keep livestock in fields and they're still, do still doing that job today. Okay, I hope that's interesting and I'll talk to you again.